what time it is. Let's get Mr. Echidna's take on ReZero Season 3, Episode 7. My man ain't reacting. He's reviewing. I genuinely don't think, you know, the keywords makes any difference, but what the fuck do I know? Bro's getting 100k views on this. Let's get it. The speech with Subaru just raw dog the speech with no teleprompter, and it came out absolutely beautiful. That's right. The Democrats could never, bro. <laughs> no fucking teleprompter. Subaru raw dog that shit. He just, off the top of his head, he came up with such a good speech too, to compel to the average person to make them feel like the speaker is also very scared. But if that person can also encourage faith, then it riles everybody up. When I found out this was an extended length episode, the length of something else extended at the same time. And for an episode to be this okay. good, even with minimal animation and zero action, is an impressive testament to the quality of ReZero's writing, yes. music, and voice acting. But which will never be accepted by the monkeys who only want to see fight scenes. Just like the people who said episode 1 was so boring of season 3, which blows my mind. But while we're on the topic of peak, we took a little peek inside of Al- That's right, I saw it. Remember, <laughs> I turned the lights off and I saw it. And there was an, even uh, another picture that I, I'm sure he's going to enhance it pretty soon, right? Al's helmet as well. There's and like a I'll scar. about that in just a minute. Not okay. I, I did see the other picture though. He, ha he definitely looks like Subaru's eyes. And there's even like a cut there. Priscilla said like, hey, don't make me fuck up your face more than it already is or something back in season one, right? His face is supposed to be disfigured. Of, of course, we only saw the eye area, but he did have like a scar, I think, on the right eye nearby. Paul's helmet as well. And I'll talk about that in just a minute. Natsuki Subaru is proof that imposter syndrome is real, guys. Even despite all his accomplishments, he yeah. still didn't think he was worthy of giving that speech. He saved countless lives by defeating the Great Rabbit, the White Whale, Betelgeuse, and Elsa. Yet he thought nice Anastasia picture. was more worthy of giving the speech. I can't even count how many times Subaru has literally saved the world. If he wasn't there to protect Amelia every time someone tried to kill her, Puck would have ended the world a long time ago, but- In order to force a reset, because Puck knows return by death, right? Despite all of Subaru's heroic accomplishments, the actual reason he's the perfect person to give this speech- Because he's the average person. He can make them all relate to him. No one else could. This is actually like- <laughs> I don't want to compare, you know, Subaru to- the goat, Mr. Satan or Hercule, because I don't think a lot of people respect Mr. Satan or Hercule from Dragon Ball. But again, like Goku and Vegeta, they're trying to do Spirit Bomb against Boo. They need some energy. They're like, come on, people of Earth, give me some power, goddammit. And the humans are like, what? This guy's scary. Ew, no. And Mr. Hercule was like, ladies and gentlemen, don't worry, for I am here. They're like, oh my god. Mr. Hercule is because he knows exactly how these people feel. He's been in their position before. We've seen him cower in fear and despair, wanting to give up and cry. We watched him try to run away with Rem and abandon everything. Subaru has been hopeless before, and he understands how it feels to be completely and utterly powerless. But he learned from those experiences, and this time, he was ready to face the witch cult. And that's why he's the perfect person to give the yes, speech. Sir. So he takes advantage of Sirius's wrath authority to inspire hope in the survivors and encourage them not to give up. To it was pretty cool that... We figured out that, you know, we could use the authority of wrath against Sirius. Rather than everyone cower in fear, if we give him hope and insp inspiration, they can all, too, you know, be really riled up. Keep fighting. To Wait. Does this mean Subaru's speech was actually not good? And without the authority of wrath in place, the inspiration and the hope cascading from people to people would have never happened? See, this is why I should be making rage bait, you know, videos. There's no one else that's doing rage bait online that knows the show like I do. So many idiots, so full of just error in their logic, trying to shit on Reezer when they'd have no idea what they're talking about. If someone made this talking point for Subaru and said, this is why he's trash, I could laugh at it. Because there's some partial truth there that you can laugh at and agree with, right? Yeah, I, I should, dude, I should just made another channel called Bait Bait TV. The entire premise of it, again, is, is just, just hate watching videos, but like where I genuinely care and put effort into the rage bait.
despite insurmountable odds, is the very essence of Natsuki Subaru as a character. So he essentially distributed his own determination, strengthening yes, everyone in the city, raising their morale, and filling them with the will to fight. He He's filled an them. unexpectedly powerful character in situations like this, and I mean, he has returned by death, the unseen hand, he can use magic with certain limitations, and I guess... Can he use magic still, though? Maybe if we consider spear darts, you know, it, it is a subcategory of like magic and like curses together, right? But I thought the gate is broken, so Subaru can't ever use magic unless he's with Biko. And I thought that like we were using Biko's gate or something, but maybe um, there's something else going on. But Subaru has a lot of powers, yeah. Now his leg regenerates. But Subaru's best ability was always his ability to inspire yep. people. We yep. saw this firsthand during the White Whale. White Whale. Exactly, right? Like, Krush was inspiring, she did a speech and everything, but when Wilhelm seemingly died by the White Whale, and everything looked bad, and the smog was everywhere, Subaru, with Rem, charges in, and even in the beginning they charge in, the weakest person on the field is, like, lighting hope in everyone's hearts. On his own, with nobody else on his ground yep. dragon, Subaru charged at the White Whale with such enthusiasm that it motivated the rest of the soldiers to follow. I remember. And ultimately, that battle was won because of Subaru's determination. And now, the same thing is happening again here in Priestella. Not only is he empowering his allies to fight the Witch Cult, but he's also saving the city from self-destructing. We've seen the pinnacle of Sirius's wrath authority and what it does to people. So without Subaru, most of the survivors in this city would have been just died. killed each other and the themselves. Mm -hmm. I put out a tweet a few days ago declaring Subaru the greatest anime protagonist of all time. <laughs> I can't imagine. We should read his tweet re responses. I'm sure there's some crazy motherfuckers in there just like in the trenches like, No! No he's not! Terrible trash trash! And I know that's a pretty bold fucking statement to make. <laughs> here, here we go. Also, this is the funniest thing. Who the fuck is this? Now, I think that they're probably saying it to Subaru and not, you know, a kid nut. When there's, you know, Thorfinn, Guts, Luffy, Lelouch, Goku, Kazuya from Rent to Yo, he's cranking it right now Girlfriend. But those are all totally valid opinions to have, and I'm not trying to change anyone's Who's the goat over here? In every one of these people, who is the goat? Hmm. I remember Inuyasha. That's like one of the first animes I ever watched as like, like a, just like watching from TV late at night, just random episodes. This is like Fairy Tale, Sailor Moon, Rooney Kenshin, Bleach, Yu Yu Hakusho, Saint Seiya, Hunter Hunter, Toriko One Piece, Naruto, Goku, <laughs> Dragon Ball, Yu Gi Oh, Pikachu. I think this is Claymore. I don't know who this one is. I mean, I think the goat is Goku here, right? It's gotta be Goku. Because, like, you just have to show respect to the grandfather that kind of started all the battle shonens. Not to say that everything here is shonen. But Goku, obviously, Naruto, you know, One Piece, Bleach. This all really, like, this four right here. Like, Goku and then the big three of the generation. Right? And then there were some other shows like this. Of course, Yu Yu Hakusho was, you know, airing too. But I think that Bleach, Naruto, One Piece gets a lot more recognition than, let's say, Yu Yu Hakusho and Hunter x Hunter. And I think they're the same authors here, right? They're, like, the same authors here. Rooney Kenshin gets glazed a lot, FMA too, but I, I think that most people would... Oh shit, <laughs> I'm over here. I think most people would say, like, this, this four, right over here. ...mind. However, Natsuki Subaru deserves to be in the conversation. That's okay. all. Again, this is just my personal opinion, but if I had sex with Subaru, I would be arrested for bestiality for fucking the goat. But let's back... Wait, I heard that joke before. Someone in my chat made that joke. You stole it from a kid nut. Unless someone stole... Uh, uh, unless he also stole it from someone else. I don't know. Back up and talk about Al for a sec. We've never actually seen him do anything before, so I thought it would have been nice if we got to watch him fight these cultists and... Nope. We're not gonna get anything. We just see him unsheathing his blade. And his blade is... Seems like a short blade, right? It's not a long blade. I wonder how he fights. We've never seen anything. Right? And he only has one arm. So it's really interesting to wonder, like, what are his powers? What the fuck does he do? Does he have an authority? Does he have something related to, like, Return by Death? And that's how he knew the information about the Pristilla 10 before, you know, the floodgate. Uh, sorry, before the first broadcast happened. I don't know, but shady guy, but he killed all of them, which is pretty impressive. Because I don't think Subaru could take on all these cult members by himself. And I thought that Al 
would be like a weak fighter considering the discussions before Al separated from the pack and Subaru wanted to see like, yo, is Al actually weaker than me or something so I can know that I'm not the weakest link. He seems pretty fucking capable, bro. He just did like 1v10. It's cultists instead of just showing us the aftermath, but I can't complain because this was an anime original scene to be okay, okay. In the light novel, Al simply told us what happened here and we had to choose whether we believed him or not. But now it's confirmed that he was telling the truth. So it turns out that Al is not a witch cultist. He simply just took a witch cult communication device from yep. one of the trash mobs he defeated. And I guess he called Regulus. Now, I wonder... If the cult members bowed to Al. You know what I mean? You know how like all the cult members, the fingers from Betrugus's group, they bowed to Subaru before? Out of respect because of the miasma. Wonder if they did that to Al. Just to see. And then the funniest thing is, while they all bowed, Al was like, oh, thank you, Kyodice. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And then he's like, psych. And then he killed them all what would happen but he's still worth analyzing so in the novel subaru notes that al's been acting weird lately and that it must be wrath's authority amplifying his mood now most people affected by wrath's authority mm. are either sad afraid or angry however al seems to be at most annoyed yeah he seemed annoyed and concerned my interpretation of these scenes is again basing that subaru is al and al is subaru somehow right that al is like the dark timeline of Natsuki Subaru and he's failed and you know he's trying to prevent the same mistakes happening to this version of Subaru is what I kind of felt not not saying that that's the exact like fact of what's going to happen but something that on that vibe I was feeling and he seemed definitely ticked off he seemed definitely like you shouldn't do this bro just it, it looked like he was trying to give him like a way out right it's also fascinating that all the things he said kind of implies that he doesn't know Subaru has returned by death, right? Because if he did, then all the things of saying like, you know, these are other people's losses too. You, you're not just like taking L's by yourself anymore. Everyone else will be taking L's. And if he knew that, you know, Subaru had returned by death and he could just repeat, I don't think he would have said that. So that's kind of interesting. And that's kind of an odd emotion to have at a time yep. like this. Imagine if someone breaks into your house and threatens to kill you and your reaction is just... Man, home invaders are so annoying. Based. The way Al speaks when he's talking about the witch cult has an air of familiarity, as if they were old rivals or yeah, something of that Yeah, he nature. knows them. Subaru even notes in the light novel that it was clear Al knew something about the witch cult that he wasn't sharing. So even though he's on our side, I still don't trust him entirely. But on the other hand, Al could also be a lot less suspicious than he seems. The witch cult is a big group that does a lot of things in a lot of places, so it wouldn't be that weird for Al to cross paths with them at some point in his life and gather information about them from that encounter. Sure, that is reasonable, but I would like to have the details of the stories of how he knows so much. Gluttony, name mechanic, Tifon's remains. No, it's, it's more like Tifon, oh, so she drowned, huh? Like that acknowledgement. I don't know, there's, there, it's, there's witches scent radiating from the back of his head. That's what was said in the cut content. And that's when we learned that Al doesn't seem to like Rem or Ram. Right, so there's more stuff happening. I'm not sure what is going on with Al, but Alice Subaru confirmed? But just to make him even more sus, they showed him standing right next to a steering wheel, which could be nothing, but it could also be something. The biggest a mystery. A steering wheel. Of a ship? This is some sort of port that the witch cult members arrived? Don't, I, I don't know. But it could also be something. The biggest. Could it also be some sort of symbolism that Al is the driver of the story? Hey, I don't know. The Watergate? Yeah. I mean, I'm still thinking that Al is the one that flooded Pristilla, so like it could be something like that mystery about al though is whatever's under his helmet this episode there was one frame where you could kind of see mm -hmm. inside of it if we turn up the brightness Enhance. you can clearly see Enhance. al's eyes a Enhance. piece of his hair and some yeah. scar on his yes this is the version that i saw online too right and the eyes the sharp eyes subaru's eyes i think it matches and the disfiguration the scars right so there's it's not just in the right eye so it's all over huh okay face it looks almost like a burn mark actually but who the fuck knows the first thing i noticed however is that his eyes are very mm. similar to subaru's like 
identical to Subaru's. Like straight up, they're almost identical. This could be a coincidence. <laughs> Get it? Identical eyes. I. Hoshino I. I. Incidents, but I. I don't know if those exist in ReZero. I don't personally believe in this theory, but it's a very popular theory, so I thought I'd mention that a lot of people think Al and Subaru are the same person. And yeah, I think they are the same person from different timelines. I could totally believe that. And no, that isn't a spoiler. Please don't be like this annoying fuck who. I wish I didn't watch this video. I am caught up, but didn't know the Wrath Archbishop. What? What is this shit? Or is Amelia's mom? No, it's not confirmed either. These are just assumptions. Goddamn, bro. Why did you have to spoil this? I can't trust your other Reezer Season 3 videos now. And I was excited to watch this after I caught up. Well, this is a skill issue. Like, his brain is so slow that, like, he's... He thinks that this is, like, spoilers. <laughs> it's funny, because his, his name is Roach. I'm sorry, man. Your biggest obstacle in life is yourself and you have no clue how much you're holding yourself back automatically assumes every theory in my videos is a spoiler no i'm not gonna spoil my audience of mostly anime only why the fuck smart. would i do that very smart decision i really appreciate how any news a kid nut asarata you know jake all the people that we farm on a weekly basis regarding the Reezero content, they really try to do just anime only as source material readers and give some context with cut content here and there. It's really nice. If they all had like light novel information discussions, it really would filter out a big chunk of the audience. Now you would have a more specialized audience of only the hardcore light novel readers and you know source material enjoyers, but I think that catering towards an anime only audience is very optimal if you want to be wide appealing. You know there's people who think Auto is Pandora, right? Yep. <laughs> yes, we're, I'm not letting that go. <laughs> this is a stupid theory that I will never fucking let go, bro. If I talked about that theory, would you call it? <laughs> what is this, bro? It's Pandora. It's Pandora Otto's outfit, bro. Uh huh. Yep. Is it a massive spoiler too, guys. New spoiler just dropped. Oh, Emilia shit. is Ricardo. And I knew it. I can't watch this guy's channel anymore. I can't believe you spoiled this. A kid nut ate my son. Anyway, I bring up this Subaru is Al theory because after Amelia's phone call with Al, something interesting happens inside Amelia's brain. She's like, huh? Why am I so sure of myself? Because it's Subaru's, like, vibes that she's getting. I think that's what it is. Well, Amelia, I'm glad you asked. Internal monologues are some of the content the anime often cuts from the light novel, but sometimes they provide very mysterious, theory-provoking information. Basically, Amelia notes that she felt comfortable and confident after talking to Al mm. because something about him reminded her of Subaru. Mm. Now, if you ask me, this is simply because Al and Subaru have similar mannerisms due to them both being from Japan. Yeah, that's totally... That, that's a very valid point. But a lot of Japanese people, I don't think they're all the same. You know? I, I don't think everyone is the same just because they're isekai characters from Japan. I think that there is an element of similarity that goes beyond just from becoming, you know, Great Waterfall, and beyond the Great Waterfall people, but rather an identity so similar that you could say that they're from different timelines or some shit. And how could you possibly say that it's from different timelines? Well, we already have, you know, time travel mechanics, and I don't think that, like, different timelines, especially that we saw from Trials, and those weren't real. Echidna was just showing us what their, you know, just AI, artificial, I don't fucking know her. She used her powers to kind of show, like, the future that never happened, right? I, I could totally believe that different timeline characters kind of, you know, came back here somehow, some way which was revealed in Break Time Episode 5. However, I guess this could also be used as evidence to support the theory that- Like, it could totally be that Al is actually the protagonist of ReZero. And in his timeline, it failed. Everything was bad. Due to the things that he did, which he probably calls out Subaru for in this episode, all the things that he, wanted, he told Subaru about, that's probably personal experience and how his timeline failed. And I don't know exactly how, but he made it to this timeline. And his goal now is to save everybody, but now he's gonna operate differently compared to what he was before, and that's why he's so shady and dark. That's a very classic trope of 
I, I've seen this mechanic happen, right? Where it's just like Doom timeline shows up in another one, wants to be the savior. But is that too simple of a theory? I don't know. Al is Subaru. And the origin of that theory, by the way, is from an if story in a mobile gacha game where Subaru is 20 years older and still trying to kill Betelgeuse, except he's wearing Al's outfit. What for the some fuck? Reason. It's not a real if story, though. Not that the other if story. Again, it's this fucking ReZero, bro. Fucking ReZero, and they're like, well, you see, in order to get this specific knowledge, you need to go to this one specific, you know. Um, parlor in Japan in the suburbs and at this specific time this one TV will play a show and that show will show you this specific clip it's like what the fuck why am I doing why, why am I searching for the fucking Dragon Balls here you, you just give me it in like break time this just this official content you make us go play a fucking mobile gacha game story to get this piece of evidence come on were ever canon or anything, but this one wasn't even written by the author. Yes, he supervised it and approved it, but I just can't take an if story. Yo, that's crazy! Elsa! Patrash! Natsuki Subaru with the arm! Look at the arm too! Remember, left arm of, you know, uh, Al was cut off, I think. But here we have like some sort of prosthetic dragon arm, right? I don't know who this cat boy is. Is this Felix? I don't know. It's, maybe it's Felix's long lost brother, but... This is crazy, bro. Biko, Catboy, Elsa, Potrash, Subaru, what the hell? Can't take an if story seriously if someone else wrote it. And also, it's behind a paywall in a gacha game, so... Well, 99. Yeah. I don't know, guys. Al could be Subaru. It's yeah, he possible. Could. And there's a lot of evidence to support that. But something about it just feels like a red herring to me. I th Absolutely, right? I am always thinking about, like, I have theories, but I'm always willing to just, like, um admit that it's wrong because the more you're convinced of something the more you're tunnel visioning and sticking yourself in a box you need to be able to think beyond that always assume that the given information is also wrong too because the more you just accept things as facts that's when you trap yourself so like i am going to stick with alice subaru but could totally be a misdirection. I think it's because the author already did this with Sirius. He covered her in bandages to intentionally hide her identity from us, yep. and then gave a mountain of evidence that pretty much 99% confirms who- Yep, this is top A special, misdirection, giving us so much. This is, this is like 99.99% .99 sure, but psych, got you, motherfucker. The biggest troll, man. Um, Al is Subaru's dad. How about that, huh? How about that? Al is Natsuki Ken. Yup, from a different timeline. Rather than Subaru getting, you know, isekai it's Natsuki Ken. Yup, yup, mm-hmm. Who she is. And I just don't think he would use the exact same literary device to resolve two separate plot points. But I guess we'll find out 10 years from now when ReZero finally explains a single one of its countless mysteries. Anyway, mm -hmm. wife number 184 reveals more of the horrific atrocities Regulus has committed. Apparently, when he wants to marry someone, he kills their entire family and everyone they know. Just Damn. what a kind thing for a husband to do for his wife. I would love to hear how he would defend that if someone asked him about well, there's one way of defending this, and I'm sure, you know, Thanksgiving's in America is coming up, right? Or has it already happened? I'm not sure. Canadian Thanksgiving's like a month ago. There's people who fucking hate their families, man. They despise everything about their families. So, like, there are some wives that be like, oh, shit, you're going to get rid of my terrible family? Thank you, Regulus. Also, I noticed his wives have their numbers integrated into their designs, and I think that's wow. because Regulus not only can't re <laughs> It's an employee badge! It's an actual employee badge! I don't know your numbers, bro! A 184 though, nice one. ...remember their names, but he can't even remember their numbers either. Amelia was pretty cute when she was pretending to be asleep, but mm -hmm. not quite as cute as Garfield, Garfield? when he ran over to hug. The Mimi bro. Mimi has just converted Garfield. Subaru. The only way they could have made this episode better was, again, if maybe they gave us a couple seconds of Al fighting the cultists because yeah. there wasn't really much animation this episode, other than that one scene with Pan- uh, the birds, I mean. Obvi the birds are Pandora. I'm down. Yo, I'm down, bro. That's Pandora. Obviously, the highlight was supposed to be the voice acting and the music, though. Emilia's insert song was amazing, as well as the new soundtracks by Kenichiro-sama and- Yep, Kenichiro Suedo. 
the GOAT, bro. He is the reason why we have godlike soundtracks in anime. Of course, there's many amazing composers, but... ReZero soundtrack, he's killing it. Eminence in Shadow. Isekai Shikaku most recently, too. Ichiro Sama and Kobayashi absolutely nailed his speech. It was just so good. I did find it interesting how they didn't show us the POV of any of the archbishops, though. Obviously, they're in the city, so they must have heard Subaru's speech yeah. as well, and I would have liked to see their reactions to it, but apparently, they didn't have a reaction to it. According to this tweet from the author, the archbishops literally didn't care, because like Al said earlier, the yeah. witch cult doesn't even consider the possibility yeah, they're so cocky. They are so, so confident. Like, like they left this thing on. They didn't destroy it. They left it on. It's like, you want to use it? Go ahead. What's that going to do for us? Nothing. Possibility of losing. A dragon doesn't care what the ants are planning. But Ooh. Reinhardt is not an ant. He finally shows up at the end of the episode, meaning next week's episode is probably going to be a banger. In fact, yeah. I expect Reinhardt to pop off. Right? I, I think that there is um, basically, uh, it, imagine it like this, there's like a Reinhardt meter. And this meter, when full, we get to use like, Reinhardt saves us discount code. Just like one time thing. But that meter, once used, he gets benched. There's a creative way to remove him from the story, and we have to wait. And the meter has to build up. So the special meter for Reinhardt has built up. We can use him next episode. Who knows how significant it will be, but if it's the season finale, I ex not, not the finale, but like the, the finale of the attack arc, because there's the counter-attack arc, which is the second half that's going to air in February, right? Regarding arc five. So, Reinhardt, you better do some shit. It begins the adaptation of volume 18, chapter four, titled The Stars That Engrave History. <sighs> the stars, bro. The constellations. The one you will come to love someday. Interesting. The newest hero and the most ancient hero. That the most ancient hero is, you know, the Von Austria family line. And the newest hero is Natsuki Subaru. Which also happens to be the title of this entire arc in the web novel. So wow. basically, shit's about to get real. This yep. episode was a 10 out of 10. Next week is going to be the last episode until February. No. And also, my video might be delayed a little bit. I probably won't be able to publish it the same day the episode airs due to some IRL shit getting in the way. But yeah, thanks for watching. I gotta go take... Thank you, Mr. Echidna. Take care of yourself with your IRL shit. Congratulations to the 300k subs. God damn, can you, can you believe that? 300,000, bro. Of all the ReZero, you know, content creators that does, you know, these like episodic review analysis stuff, he does fucking dominate. Why is that? Besides him having good content. My assumption is early market capture. As in like, Back when season one and season two was airing, maybe like other people weren't on it as fast as he was doing. And because he was early, he captured the market early and he had compelling content. And through that loyal audiences form and, you know, he just dominates. But here's the link. Please go give Mr. Echidna a like on the video, share his shit. I'll see you next time.